beautiful. I'm out of place. He's out of place? Yeah. Let's call him back. Let's go, bring it up. Hey, three scores. That's pretty good. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. How about that? Three for three. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right, everyone needs to go. Got the flag. United States of America. You opened it up. We have the Star Spangled Banner. And then just to serve our country so that we can enjoy all the fruits that we have in this great game that we get to play. This gentleman was born in Panama. He's a family of um, um, military people. Fred Winston was uh, shot down. I get emotional when I talk about these kind of things because <clears throat> these kind of people in blood made our lives great. My family and your family. Yes, sir. Spent five years. Two years. Thanks for taking the time for a minute so that I can uh, come and say hello and tell you how proud I am to be here and proud uh, of a unique institution institution that went through a great tragedy institution with a tradition of courage and a tradition of victory and a tra tradition of winning. And I know that uh, you're looking forward to this season. Um, I, I, I have, as you know, and met, I, I'm sure you know, I'm running for president of the United States. And I was able to get <clears throat> the nomination of my party, so now we're down to two of us. But I'd also like to tell you very briefly, I, I didn't do well when I was at the Naval Academy. A lot of people did not predict that I would ever be a candidate for president of the United States for this country and to put my country above myself. As Coach just mentioned, I was shot down by a surface-to-air missile while flying on a combat mission in the Vietnam War, and it was in one of the most heavily defended places in the middle of the city of Hanoi, and there was these things that looked like telephone poles, which were surface-to-air missiles coming off all after us, and I got hit by one and ejected its bomb. As you can imagine, the people there that pulled me out of the lake were not happy. In fact, they were pretty steamed, and I don't blame them in a way. And they broke my shoulder and they bayoneted me uh, here and in, the, and in the ankle, and I spent But I'd like to just tell you a brief story about one of them very briefly, because I think <coughs> that's what America I was not allowed to see or talk to anybody else, but we used to tap on the walls to each other in order to communicate with each other because we were, because they wanted us to write war, war crimes confessions and they wanted us to say things against our country. But we were a team and we had leaders. And our leaders were our senior ranking officers and they're the ones that when we fail, they pick us up and send us back into the fight. And we didn't always win. Sometimes it was very tough. Well, after the 25 or 30 in each set, now, that was because Americans spoke out on our behalf, and it was a long time ago, and I don't expect you to remember it. The change in treatment was that they allowed us to have some packages from home, some of us. And some of it they had, like a handkerchief or a scarf or something like that. One of the guys that moved into the cell with me was a guy by the name of Mike Christian. He was born in a small town near Selma, Alabama. Very poor family, didn't wear a pair of shoes until he was 13 years, an A6 intruder, uh, bombardier navigator. He was shot down and captured sometime before I was. He had hair, lasted me five and a half years. I recommend him strongly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mike Christian took uh, his blue shirt and got a piece of white cloth and a piece of red cloth and a piece of bamboo and made himself a bamboo needle and sewed on the inside of his flag, of his shirt, the American flag. Every evening before we would have interesting content, we would put Mike's shirt on the wall of our cell and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, saying the Pledge of Allegiance isn't the most important part of our day as we go about events, and I understand that. I can assure you, some of those guys had already been in prison for as long as six or seven years, that it was the most important part of our day. Mac opened the door of the cell and called for him to come out. He came out, he closed the door of the cell, and they beat him for about the next two hours. And they beat him very badly. And then when they finished, they threw him back inside of the cell. He was in very bad shape, as you could imagine. Well, the room in which we lived had a concrete slab in the center of it, which we slept. 
there was four light bulbs, one in each corner of the room, that shone 24 hours a day. I, we cleaned him up as well as we could. I went over to go down and sleep on the, to go to sleep on the cell, and I happened as I did, I looked over in the corner of the cell, he was sitting there with a piece of white cloth and a piece of red cloth and a bamboo needle. His eyes were almost shut from the beating that he had received. It was, of course, Mike Christian sewing another American flag. He knew that it wasn't so important to him, but he knew how important it was to pledge our allegiance to our flag and our country. So you are here in an institution that has a tradition of, of tragedy, of courage, and greatness. And Americans are watching you, and I watch you, and millions and millions of people will be watching, including our soldiers and sa sailors. Three. One, two, three. Meetings. Get the meetings. Get